Hi everyone, I am P. Raju, Assistant Professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, SR Care Engineering College, Chennavaram, Bhimavaram. Today, I am going to start a new course called Building Materials and Construction for the Students of Civil Engineering. So, this subject deals with the basic building materials that are required and the type of construction it requires. So, uh, I'll be dealing with many of the building materials, their advantages, disadvantages and their uses and uh, many applications regarding those materials in this particular subject. So, today's topic is stones. So, again, before entering into the main, main uh, theme today, I would like to say that each lecture of mine consists of a set of lecture outcomes. If you can see for today's lecture, these are the lecture outcomes. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to define and classify building stones. You will be able to explain the characteristics and uses of building stones and learn various quarrying methods of building stones. So these are the three lecture outcomes which you are going to learn in this particular lecture. So coming to the basic definition of building materials and building construction. Building construction, it is an ancient human activity done to adapt themselves to a wide variety of climates. So, in the ancient days, people used to travel from one place to another place. Then they used to have a temporary structure. So, by using a thatched roof or simply by using some leaves or temporary wood, they used to have a shelter. Those are not permanent structures. But with the advent of technology, the migrants have been decreased and you are staying in a single place. So, we need to go for a permanent structure. So, the improvement of building materials came then. So, with the invent of technology, we have got many materials like lime, bricks, stones, timber, plastic, aluminium, etc. So, these are various building materials which we have got. So, from the starting, you can see, if you can see, from the construction of an igloo, to the tallest buildings or the tallest structures now, the improvement of building materials is clearly evident. So, it can be an underground structure, it can be an overground structure or it can be an on-ground structure. So, all these structures require is these building materials. So, building materials are very essential to accommodate all these type of structures. So, building materials play a crucial role in building construction. So, coming to the transformation of building materials since ages and now. So, if you can compare various building components here, if you can take a wall, then they used to have stone and lime as major building materials. But now we are going to have various bricks, cement and various type of lightweight blocks or uh, cement blocks. So, AAC is autoclaved aerated concrete blocks. So, those are lightweight blocks. So, in the olden days, we used to have stone and lime as the basic building material for walls construction and now we are going to have bricks or cement for construction of walls so coming to the roofing then we used to have stones lime timber or tile for roofing but uh, as they are all temporary structures then we used to have this kind of materials but now with the advent of technology we have got steel and concrete because they are more durable than other these materials and are also uh, even the cost is more than uh, this uh, timber, tile and uh, stones. But the thing is that the steel and concrete possesses more durability than these materials. So, uh, nowadays we are using steel and concrete. And coming to flooring, then we used to have either mud or some kind of napa stones. And in Telugu we will call it as naparaya. So, uh, then we used to have this as your flooring. But now we are going to have tiles, concrete, marble, granite. The one you are seeing here is granite. So we are using different materials based on our use because of high durability requirement. So coming to paints, in the olden days then we used to have seashells as lined. They used to heat it and then break it and apply it as a mortar. So uh, that is used to be a paint at that time. But now we have many colored pigments, varnishes, emulsions, tractor emulsions. So, these kind of paintings have improved uh, the quality of building materials now. So, coming to the doors and windows, then we used to have wood. 
but now we are going to have wood steel aluminium converted wood like plywood particle board chip board etc so we have lot of alternatives now because of deforestation we can't use wood more because because of that we have gone for some alternative materials now so in the olden days we used to have abundant wood then we used to have all our doors and windows by using your take wood but uh, building the same with take is not at all uh, possible now so we are going for alternative materials like steel aluminium and converted wood etc so coming to the next revolutionary material which is concrete so concrete is a mixture of cement sand coarse aggregate which are stones and water so this is the most consumed material on earth next to water so almost uh, 2 to 3 tons per person per year is being consumed uh, it is the most important uh, building material nowadays and the most consumed building material nowadays and this is about uh, the transformation uh, that has happened since ages to the present scenario so coming to our today's topic stone so a stone is basically a hard solid non metallic mineral matter of which a rock is made and again mineral is an inorganic substance that is uh, available abundantly in nature so these rocks are abundantly available uh, in the olden days they used to have every kind of wall roof or any kind of structure by using stones you can see the ancient temples like uh, the bhrudeshwara temple uh, in uh, tanjore and uh, kailasa temple in ellore so almost these two temples are completely of rock made this is actually we will call it as ekshila this was carved out uh, from a single uh, rock so these type of structures uh, are uh, carved out from a single rock or stone um, so uh, the basic difference between a rock and a stone is a group of stones combined together to form a rock so for our uh, building or structural purpose we are converting those rocks into sufficient stones Uh, it used to be used uh, abundantly in the olden days because of uh, the extinction of the rocks also uh, we are using uh, some kind of alternative materials uh, as of now uh, we are using stones for kind of uh, flooring or uh, uh, building elevations etc so coming to the classification of stones they are broadly divided into three types physical chemical and biological so again these three compositions or classifications are divided into three types again so coming to the physical classification they are divided into stratified unstratified and foliated so stratified rocks or stones are the one which can be split up in a definite plane so in a single plane they can be split up you can see the layers here so they are in layers uh, this is an example of a sedimentary rock actually so these rocks can be split up very easily because of its uh, lesser strength so uh, coming to unstratified rocks where this cannot be split up in definite directions this is an example of a granite where it will have uniform texture and it is one of the example for igneous rocks so this is granite next coming to the foliated rock which can be split up only in a definite direction not in a entire plane but in a definite direction it can be split up so depending upon the splitting nature and the physical property these are divided into stratified unstratified and foliated and coming to the chemical composition they are divided into argillaceous calcareous siliceous so this is argillaceous calcareous and siliceous so chemical composition is basically the amount of mineral that is extensively present in that particular stone so argillaceous rocks are the rocks which are having high alumina content it is not aluminum it is alumina so calcareous rocks are the rocks which are having calcium as its highest content and siliceous rocks are the rocks which are having silica as its highest content so these are based upon its chemical compositions these three chemical composition uh, rocks are the major useful materials in the uh, manufacturing of cement also so coming to the biological classification and the important classification so this is how the rocks are found actually so ba based upon this they are igneous sedimentary and metamorphic igneous rocks are the rocks which are formed from the molten lava when the volcanic eruption happens the lava comes out and cools down so the rock which has cooled down is called simply igneous rocks so igneous rocks are one of the strongest rocks and uh, with the weathering actions 
the igneous rocks get separated and deposited as sediments and these sediments forms sedimentary rocks so sedimentary rocks are the rocks which are formed in layers where i have said it for stratified rocks so this is sedimentary rock so sedimentary rocks after uh, yeah, uh, after covering up with dust or uh, uh, traveling a huge distance so it forms as a metamorphic rock so this metamorphic rock again uh, transforms into a magma and then volcanic eruption occurs and then again igneous rocks so this is a cyclic process so igneous rocks to sedimentary rock sedimentary rock to metamorphic rock so uh, this is uh, the one of the important classifications of these stones so coming to the examples of stratified rocks so sedimentary rocks is an example of stratified rocks and unstratified rocks igneous rocks and foliated rocks metamorphic rocks are the best examples and coming to the chemical classification argillaceous rocks have slate and laterite these are the two minerals which are uh, having alumina as the highest content and next limestone and marble are having calcium content as highest and granite and quartzite are having silica as its highest content so these are the examples and coming to the igneous rocks the examples are granite basalt and dolerite and sedimentary rock it is gravel sandstone limestone and coming to metamorphic rock quartzite slate and marble so if you can compare between these three rocks igneous and metamorphic are some of the strongest rocks and sedimentary rocks like limestone are uh, used in the manufacturing of cement and uh, used as a alternative building material so this is about the classification so coming to the characteristics of a good building stone what are the characteristics a good good building stone should possess so these are some of the good characteristics so it should have a good crushing strength it should have a proper fracture along its plane it should have a durability it should have proper appearance hardness toughness percentage of wear it has and resistance against fire and the specific gravity of that particular material water absorption and texture so these are the important characteristics which will decide a stone whether it is a good building stone or not so coming to the crushing strength or the compressive strength is the uh, strength which a stone can bear so if you take this as a stone if you apply load on it so if it can bear a maximum amount of load say for example for a good stone it should uh, uh, for a good building stone it should be greater than 100 newton per mm square or 100 uh, mega pascals so this that much amount of load it should bear so generally a good building stone can be rated from 60 to 200 newton per mm square strength as a good uh, crushing strength so so if there is a fracture if there is a fracture along a particular plane or a, a particular area then it will be very good that means if a fracture is along uh, along a uh, uneven plane if you if you didn't expect a fracture in that plane if you are using it as a building stone then it will be a difficult one so simple example for it is limestone or sandstone so we, we can't use lime, limestone or sandstone uh, for uh, uh, construction of walls because they will break easily so it all depends on the fracture also next comes durability so durability is one of the, the important factor uh, we can't replace the materials uh, once in a while so they have to be permanent durability is how much uh, time or how long it is going to be there so durability is also one of the important factor and next coming to the appearance so you can see these three uh, here so depending upon its appearance even its cost varies see if you are uh, having this kind of say sandstones these are, these are very cheap if you are coming to some granite blocks or uh, some kind of napa stones they are somewhat costly and if you are going for a normal stones which are quarried or uh, which are uh, uh, from directly obtained from a blasting of stones so this is of a different cost so it all depends on the appearance if you want a perfect size and shape of a stone then it will be costly so if it is in an indefinite shape uh, so definitely it will be costless so appearance uh, appearance is also of prime importance when it comes to uh, deciding a good building stone so uh, these kind of sandstones are uh, we'll call it as gulakaraldu in telugu so if you can use uh, these stones for uh, any kind of building structure it will be it will not uh, bear load if you are using these kind of stones definitely they will bear load so it all depends on the uh, capacity of these stones next coming to the hardness hardness is 
resistance against abrasion resistance against abrasion and toughness is resistance against impact so these are the two important properties generally uh, taken for any kind of a material so these two properties will decide uh, how strong uh, your material will be so this table will give you uh, a different pattern for uh, some of the stones uh, these are the minerals basalt limestone granite and quartzite so these are the crushing strength abrasion value which is hard hardness and impact value which is toughness and uh, see hardness uh, hardness of a material should be greater than 18 or 19 so if the uh, the uh, hardness value is greater than 19 it is considered as a very good material if the toughness is greater than 16 it is considered as a very good material see here uh, impact value for limestone uh, and the abrasion value for uh, limestone is very much low compared to other rocks or stones but the thing is that this limestone can be used for alternate purposes and not for as a building stone so uh, coming to the percentage of wear generally three percentage of uh, wear is uh, uh, much more for uh, any stone if it is greater than uh, three percentage Mm, then it, it will be avoided it can't be used as a building stone so the percentage of wear should be three percent less than three percentage and re, it should have a resistance against fire generally igneous rocks are very much strong against uh, fire attack uh, limestone and sandstone are uh, some of the examples for uh, uh, for materials which can take fire immediately coming to the specific gravity specific gravity is uh, the ratio between the uh, density of a substance to the density of equal amount of water or it can be anything so specific gravity is conducted like this so it will be between 2 point uh, if it is between 2.3 to 2.5 then it is considered as a very good specific gravity here uh, all these uh, stones are having a very good specific gravity and coming to the water absorption uh, it should be less than six percentage so if it is less than six percentage then it is very good so here basalt is having 6, granite is having 1 and 3 as quartzite. So that is the reason why granite is being used as a flooring material. It cannot, it won't absorb any kind of water. When it comes to limestone, it can absorb up to 10% of its weight. So which is strongly not recommended for uh, floorings. So uh, each type of material has its own importance and it all depends on uh, the type of uh, usage a client requires. And uh, last one is the texture. See if the texture of a particular stone is not uniform. Say for example, for a marble, there should be a smooth uh, surface. If you are taking some stones uh, like ballast stones, ballast stones are the stones which are used for uh, railway rail, railways. In between two rails, there will be stones. Those are called ballast stones. For that, there should be a rough texture, not smooth texture. So different types of uh, stones possesses different types of textures. It all depends on the particular usage. So these are some of the characteristics of a good building stone. So coming to the usage of building stones, they can be used as the materials for foundations, dams, masonry walls, raw materials in concrete, decorative materials, lintels, arches and roofs. So if you can see here, here uh, this is used for a foundation. So this is a load bearing wall actually. So uh, it is being uh, done as a foundation. So this is one of the usage. Next one is for dams. So actually this dam is called uh, Kalane Dam. Kalane Dam, it is located in uh, Trichirapalli in Tamil Nadu. It was one of the oldest uh, dam which is completely built by using stones. So it was constructed way back in two, uh, second century AD by Cholas. So uh, the, there are uh, some other dams which are being uh, built, uh, built with uh, stones. And the height of this, this is not a dam actually, this is an uh, anicut. The height of this is nearly 18 feet. So it can store uh, water and it can uh, deviate it for irrigation. So this is about dams and next one is for masonry. So for uh, any kind of stone masonry work, it can be useful. So this is a wall actually. So this can also be useful like that. And it can also be used as artificial sand. Artificial sand or otherwise called as robo sand. Robo sand is making the stone into powdered form and using it as a alternative for sand. See last year uh, in 2019, because of uh, non-availability of sand, 
the constructions have been stopped so then uh, people used to grind these uh, stones and then use it as an alternative material for uh, sand and coming to the raw material in concrete it is used as kankar we will call it as kankar here so these kind of stones are being used in different sizes and generally the sizes of stones comes like this if it is greater than 80 mm size we will call it as boulders if it is between 80 to 40 mm size we will call it as ballast if it is below that 40 to say 4.75 mm we will call it as a coarse aggregate if it is less than 4.75 mm we will call it as fine aggregate so the terminology goes like this so for concrete we are going to use 20 mm 10 mm and if it is for foundations we can go up to 40 mm size so uh, this is the usage of uh, building stones in um, raw material in concrete next one is as a decorative material as I discussed earlier it can be marble or it can be granite or it can be any of the stones which possesses uh, very good uh, tex uh, texture and uh, structural properties which can be used as a decorative material so it can also be used in lintels arches and roofs see in the ancient structures like temples and ancient roman structures they used to have these arches and lintels and these brick masonries everything used to be of stones so these are some of the uh, uses of building stones apart from that this can be used for many building applications and purposes so next one is stone quarrying so basically stone quarrying is the open part of the natural rock from which useful stone is obtained is known as quarry so it is a place where we are going to take a, take the rock say there are many hills where we need to excavate if it is a normal material say if it is a soft rock soft stone it can be easily brought by using some tools if it is hard rock then it needs to go for another method so if you can see here this is a marble quarry see almost they are uh, being cut down in uh, equal shapes and sizes so because of its utility it needs to be carefully taken in the quarry so now we will see about various methods of quarry so first one is digging or excavating second one is heating and third one is wedging and fourth one is uh, quarrying by using channeling machine and last one is blasting so first one digging and excavating if the rock is very weak say if it is soft rock then it can be uh, uh, excavated or it can be digged by using some tools so these are some of the tools here so it can be a hammer it can be a chisel so there are many types of tools that can be used for uh, digging so olden days the people used to go for this and coming to the heating so when uh, when a layer of rock is uh, beneath another rock say for example i have said about stratified rock so stratified rock in stratified rock uh, each layer is differentiated so when we need a bottom rock the top rock can be heated say for example limestone so limestone if it is heated the bottom rock can be easily taken out so if you think of such kind of things heating method is used so coming to the third one it is the quarrying by wedging so by wedge shaped tools so here we can see the wedge shaped tool here so here it is uh, made of steel actually so it can also be by wood uh, in the olden days they used to have this kind of uh, shaped tools for excavating the rock or quarrying the rock by using a hammer we can uh, split the rock very easily so this is the process of wedging and com coming to the channeling machine so we have a channeling machine which is uh, operated automatically and then excavated rock uh, can be easily transported so this channeling machine is useful for soft rock so next one is the method of pouring by blasting so uh, when it is blasting we have again two types of blasting sequential blasting and continuous blasting so continuous blasting is the one which have all the detonators detonators are the kind of uh, bombs in normal terminology if you are saying bombs are at a time blasted so that is called a continuous blasting if the same thing happens in a sequential manner say that uh, the time between two successive holes of charge is say 130th of the second or 140th of a second then that is called a sequential blast blasting so sequential blasting will give you a better output than continuous blasting so now we will see a video regarding all the methods of quarrying now
see this is a process of wedging so you can see so this process of wedging is preferred when there is no or less preference for blasting so if it is if the people around uh, that particular site is uh, uh, nearby so we should not uh, prefer uh, blasting so we are going for wedging so this is the oldest method and uh, one of the best method to get uh, instantaneous result so you can see after the wedging process is completed we can see the crack here so by this uh, we can easily split the rock into two so this is one of the best method for it so this is the final output so next one is stone blasting see here so this is a sequential blasting so this is how blasting of rock is done so this is one of the process of quarrying next one will be continuous blasting so this is a rock which is found beneath uh, one of the homes and uh, this has to split this rock so he is charging the hole here he has already drilled the holes here so he is charging it with an explosive and by using some electrical wires they are going to connect all these holes all these holes are connected yeah. so all these holes are connected we will call it as a detonating pod and this is the gunpowder he is using we, we will also we will also use ammonium nitrate plus fuel oil as a uh, explosive so here he, he is using gunpowder so all the fires all the holes are connected electrically and a over button is laid and see here you will see the blast so in order to secure that we have done this is the output we have got from that particular blast next one is chemical blasting so by boring holes and uh, cleaning that holes and by using certain chemicals along with uh, cement we will call it as expansive cement so by some uh, chemicals uh, we can uh, we can fill up that hole by using that chemicals and it will expand over time so if you are uh, closing that holes by using this and uh, we should take care of uh, moisture we should not allow the moisture to go into that and after 24 hours this will be the output so we can see the rock has been split up so next one is stone crusher so by using the stone crusher we can uh, go for different sizes of stones say i have said uh, boulders uh, ballast or it can be fine aggregate coarse aggregate so it all depends on the crusher so uh, the stones are being crushed like this so after the quarrying they will go for crusher so finally we can see a granite block split up here uh, see this fellow is not even wearing any helmet or uh, this thing uh, safety is very important here so two Tata Hitachi's uh, JCBs are going here so we need to be very careful while splitting up these rocks because they are very costly and uh, they may break they might break if uh, any kind of uh, uncertainties are there so this is a very difficult and hectic task it is not that easy like digging and excavating done so these are the various methods of quarrying uh, and coming to the lecture outcomes which i have achieved in this lecture so we have defined and classified building stones i have explained the characteristics and us of building stones and learned various methods of quarrying so uh, these are the lecture outcomes so the material will be posted in google classroom these are some of the references i have used for making this presentation and uh, the next lecture will be on bricks thank you very much